Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make these fast round braid wire work earrings with beads added in along the edges of the braid and this is what mine looked like you can see we have the braid going there in the middle and then I've added these purple gemstone beads along the edges to give it a nice impact and contrast as well but you get this really nice effect of the braid running along and then I just made mine teardrop shaped so they hang nicely like that and dangle also from the ear nice movement in them so this is what they look like now originally I actually made a bracelet with this technique that looks like this you can see the exact same look to it, the same braid and then I've just chosen to use similar materials there so I could use it as a set if I wanted to so I already have a tutorial for this bracelet here if you want to check it out but today I'm going to show you how to make the earrings so if you want to learn then keep watching so these are the materials that we're using. First of all here I have my wire. So this is a regular round silver coated copper wire I'm using and it's a 0.6mm in the gauge. And then we need our beads as well. So I'm using these 3mm rounds. These are some purple agate gemstone beads but obviously you can choose whatever you want to as long as you can get your wire through the holes. And then we need our earring findings. So I've got my earring posts and butterfly backs here. You can choose whichever kind of earring findings that you prefer. And obviously we need a couple of jump rings to attach it all together. Now I always put the material list along with any links you might need in the description box below so feel free to check that out. Otherwise let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. And then as for the lengths of wires that we'll need, what I have here is four lengths of about 35 centimeters each. You want to make sure you don't have any kinks or bends in your wire and then these lengths are going to be to make one earring. And then what I've done towards one of the ends of the wires is I put them into a spring clamp like this. So this is really just to help hold them together. So it's just a little one because it's quite fine wire that we're using. And I just left a tail here of about seven centimeters going out that we're then going to need to use to finish it off with. So then to start the braid here, we're working with the long ends of the wire. So I'm just going to be starting from the point where they're coming out from the spring clamp. So then first thing I want to do is just separate them out a little bit. So just basically two to one side and two to the other side just so we kind of get in position for starting the braid. And then what we need to do is start on the outside, but kind of both sides at a time. So on the right one here, what I want to do is bring that over and into the middle, so over the next one, and just into the middle there, let it sit in the middle. And then on the other side, we need to bring the outer one under and into the middle. So like this, so we now have these two right there in the middle. Then what we need to do is cross these over each other as well, but opposite. So the right one is crossing over the other one and the left one is crossing under. So that means the right one in this case, it's going over. So that needs to go under the next one to obviously make it a braid structure. So we literally cross them over in the opposite way. And really to begin with here, it's just getting started out because the first couple of stitches might be a little bit messy until we just get the rhythm of it. So like that. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches first of all without adding in any beads again just to get the hang of it because we can always undo a few stitches as well at the end if we need to if it's a little bit not neat but then we just got to repeat again so we can also start to do what I kind of prefer what I like to do before I bring the outer one in over I like to push the next one here down a little bit just a little bit to give a bit more space so it can lie a bit tighter then I bring the outer one there over and into the middle and all the way over there so basically that's already in position then as for the other side the next one there I bring up a little bit because you need to go opposite to where it's coming from previously so that's the technically now middle one out of those three there but then the outer one goes under that and then into the middle and now because I've already brought this over I'm naturally crossing that over that middle one as well coming from the other opposite side bring that all the way then also to the opposite side so those two in the middle they were crossed over before are now naturally crossing over each other and then we can just kind of flatten this back out so bring that back down and the other one back up and then we can start to slowly see the braid structure here so you just want to do a couple of stitches of this like I said and then we need to start adding in some beads as well so now I don't want to get too far with my braid before I start adding in beads because obviously we want the beads to more or less go all the way around. So what I'm going to do is take one bead at a time and then we need to add them to the outer wires here. So I'm just doing one side at a time, adding one of my beads on this outer one and on the other side I'm doing the same thing. 
So just get right to the end, put your bead on, and then make sure you push them all the way up there because we need them to sit in those little corners, you could say. And then otherwise, I'm just going to repeat. So I'm just going to, the inner one of the two on this side, I'm pushing down. You can see that it's coming down a bit. And then I need to move the outer one here just like before. So the only difference now is that we need to make sure that that bead is going to stay in place, so in that little corner. So I'm going to make sure while I'm bringing the wire around that that bead kind of gets locked into place there. And also adding the beads in just creates a nice natural spacing as well and will help make the braid more even. So bring that over because obviously every time we add in beads, that's going to create the perfect space the beads need. And on the other side, the next one in, I'm pushing up a little bit, so like that. And then the outer one, I bring under, again, making sure that bead stays in the corner while I bring the wire in towards the middle. And again, make sure that the two middle ones there are crossing over and under in the right direction as well. And then we can just flatten all our wires back out again. Bring that back down. And then I like to also keep an eye on it throughout to make sure everything sits how I want it to sit. So if I need to adjust anything in this stitch that I just did, you can do it now. And also whenever I work with my wire here and I braid, what you'll probably find is that while you're working with it, it'll get a bit misshapen because of the warmth of your hands and the shape. So just every time I've kind of moved a wire, I like to pull it through my hands and fingers to help smooth it back out because then it's immediately ready for the next movement that you need to make with it. But otherwise, then we need to make the next stitch in the braid, which is the exact same. So first, before I do that, I need to add my beads. So just add one bead to the outer wire on either side before we start moving anything. And otherwise, we repeat the same technique. So I push the inner one of the two down before I then bring the wire around over the top of it, making sure that bead gets trapped in place. And then we can always bring this back out, flatten it out on this side. On the other side, we do the same, but kind of just mirror, so we push it up instead, because this one that I just pushed up is coming underneath. And then we bring the other one under and into the middle, which then naturally crosses that over the other one in the middle already. And then that's another stitch and you can see our wires are immediately now in position and ready for the next one. And that's basically how we make this braid. So we just add in one bead on either side and the outer wire before we actually move them. And otherwise it's just a basic four strand braid. So you just keep going like this until you have the length that we need. So now I kept braiding here and adding in the beads on the edges. And then I reached the other end and made it the length that I want. And then I just made an extra few stitches down here, just like at the beginning, just one or two extra ones without the beads. And then the length that I've ended up with in my case is about five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. And that then ends up with the size earring that I want. But if you want a bigger earring, you can easily make the braid longer than this. And obviously you might need to use longer lengths of wire originally as well. Or you could also even make it shorter. That all depends on your personal taste. And then what I recommend that you do is you actually make both of them to this point here, so both of your braids to make the two earrings, just so you then can measure them against each other and get the same length. Just it's easier to do now than after you shaped one of them. So that's actually what we're going to be doing now. So I'm just going to be using this mandrel for that. So I'm just using the handle of it, actually not the actual mandrel itself, just because it has a nice rounded shape that I want and also about the size that I want as well. But you can really use whatever you have handy at home. So any kind of container or glass bottle of some sort, just to really get the shape in place nicely. Then I take my braid, and I'm gonna place about the middle under the mandrel. Then I just start to shape it around by bringing then the two ends of the braid together. So this is gonna then end up a teardrop shape. So I'm only using that rounded mandrel on the bottom part really to get a nice shape in place. And then at the top here, what I want to do is actually intertwine them. So that means I'm going to make sure that opposite wires from the opposite end of the braid there intertwine with each other. And also the ones on the other side. Make sure they all intertwine from opposite sides one at a time. And then I'm just going to keep pushing it together. So just like that. And then it's more or less 
shape now. Now you're going to find probably that it springs open like that, but that's fine as long as we really have the basic shape in there, because we can always adjust that more. So obviously we need to fasten these together as well, but also just it's important that you get these wires up here intertwined. So basically going like that with each other from opposite ends of the braid. So then to connect the two ends of the braid together, then basically fasten the shape in place as well. So it stops springing open. Then I'm going to bring in some chain nose pliers and you're going to find you have kind of four wires on each side here. So four wires going more towards the right and four wires going more towards the left, but also going kind of against each other as they're intertwining there. So what I'm going to start out with is going to the two very middle ones. So that's the inner one from either side. So this one and this one there, these two. Now just pick out one of them. Then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and go right down where it overlaps right there in the middle. And then I want to bend it so it ends up going pretty much just straight up. So something like that. And this is then going to be, for now, the wire that's going to run all the way up in the wraps and actually we're going to end up making the wrap loop with that we can then connect to whatever earring findings we want. Then the other one of those two middle ones I want to wrap around it so just flipping it around here, have, hold it however you feel is most comfortable. And then we want to start wrapping this around the one that we just bent right down where the bend is. So literally just wrap it around and then already we can see as well it's now holding its shape but obviously we want to fasten it more in place. So I'm just going to wrap it around once or twice. No need to do it too many times because we're going to do more wraps than this as well. And then just making sure, push it all the way down. Now I might slip up and down a little bit. So basically this straight wire might slip through this a bit, but obviously that's just for now until we do some more wraps. So that's now wrapped around a couple of times. Then I take my flush cutters and I want to go in and cut off the excess. Just make sure I only cut off that wire though. Just make sure I don't catch the other one just yet. Like that. And then I just push down the end of that wire that we just cut off. Because otherwise if you run your finger over it, you'll be able to feel it a little bit sticking out. And you want to make sure that's not the case. So obviously once we've finished it, that there's no wires or anything sharp sticking out of the catches or scratches on your hair or your skin. So that's this one done. Then we need to move on and obviously finish off the other ones as well. Basically by taking one at a time and wrapping them around the same wire. Then as for the next wires that we want to wrap around, we need to grab the very next one going outward. So in from the middle there. So again, just do one side at a time. So I have the next one on my right side is this one. So I'm just going to make sure that that first wrap that we just did is pushed all the way down. Then I'm just going to basically just make sure you have a look what direction this wire seems to be going in. So it's going to wrap around like this because I then want to kind of continue that direction. And then just keep bringing it around that same wire that's going straight up. And then have it come up just above the first wrap that we did. Make sure you wrap it all the way around. because obviously we need to be secure. And then what I want to do is once I wrapped it about once to twice, whatever I feel is going to be the most secure really, then I want to cut off the excess in the exact same way. So just like that, cut it off and then make sure to push that end down. There we go, so it's not sticking out in any way. And what you can also do, and I like to do along the way, is make sure I kind of go in with my pliers and push the wraps down, so make sure they keep staying close together. So that's now another wire on that side finished off, as you can see there, from how we held it originally, the right side. So now I need to go to the opposite side, because that still has three, so just take the very next one out, and same principle, follow the direction, bring that up and around, until we then reach the wire that's going straight up just above the previous wrap. And then we can just wrap that same principle once or twice until it's secure and then cut off the excess. 
So like that, squeeze down the end. And just make sure you run your fingers over there whenever you kind of squeeze down and in to make sure it's out of the way because otherwise you can always go in and tuck it down a little bit more. So that's now two wires left on each side there. So obviously we're now going to step out to the next ones and basically it's the same principle. You just want to look at them and then you literally just want to basically follow the direction that they already seem to be going in. So these ones here, they actually seem to be going in the opposite direction. So what I want to do is still wrap them around in the same manner but just following the direction that they seem to be going in. But again, bring them up to the point just above the last wrap. And then, with these ones now, because I'm a little bit further up, just make sure to push them down. I like to, because it's already pretty secure from the previous wraps, I like to basically just wrap it around one full time, because then where I'm going to cut it is just before where it basically meets up with itself. So, once I've cut it off, just get right in there. Cut off the excess. That, when I then push this down, it basically tucks away up against itself. So that initial little wrap that we did. And of course, do the same with the one from the other side. Just wrap it around. So also these little wraps here, we're bringing it up above the previous wrap may add a nice little decorative touch to it. Bring that around. Finish that off in the same way. So we then end up, once we then also tuck this in, with only one wire left on either side. So again, same principle, we just follow the direction that they're going in. You can see this one is coming from here and wanting to kind of go around the back. So I just let it do that and bring it up. Again, to wrap around one full time until it meets back up with itself. And then squeeze it in. And the final one, same thing, wrap it around and then do a final wrap with that. Let's have a look where it meets up with itself. That's there. Cut off the excess. Get the wire out of the way. Squeeze it down. And then we've gotten rid of all the excess lengths of wire and we only have this one left that's straight up which is obviously the one that I said we need to use to make the wrap loop with because that's what we're going to do now so we can then attach it to our earring findings. Now again I'm going to get out my chain nose pliers for that because we first of all just need to make a bend in it so I'll go up just a couple of millimeters above that last wrap so we have a bit of bare wire there then I put a bend and I hold it so that bend ends up going out to the side so in that direction there. Then I take my, in this case, I'm using these six double Birmingham pliers because I like to make sure that I get the same size loop, but you can also easily use round nose pliers. Place them just above that bend that we did and then bring the end back around the pliers to basically create a full circle like that. And then take my chain nose pliers again, grab onto that circle to make sure it stays in place and keeps its shape. Then I start wrapping the tail here around below the circle, but basically just filling in that little bare wire that we left, which then also secures it in place. So just keep wrapping until you filled it in and there's no more space to wrap. Let's see if I can get one more wrap in, I think, and bring it around to then cut off the excess. And then remember to always push down the ends of the wire and make sure you can't feel anything because obviously we really don't want this to get caught in any hair or on any skin. So push that in and then you've finished off 
the ref loop here, which we can then use to attach to the earring findings just using jump rings. So obviously make the other one in the same way, attach your earring findings, and then you're going to have your finished pair of earrings. So I then made both of my earrings, so I have my complete pair, and then this is what they look like. So you can see we have the braid running all the way along, and then just with those beads added along the edges, that gives a nice bit of interest to them. So I just chose these materials here, but using different materials will give you very different looks. And also I chose to make them a teardrop shape, but again, you can really choose whatever you want to, so you can make them more rounded if that's your preference. But then I also made them so they can match the bracelet that I previously made. So obviously you can have a set to wear, but that's completely up to you. So that's how you make these earrings, a pretty simple and easy technique. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I have lots of other braided wire work tutorials for different kinds of jewellery on my channel, so feel free to check that out. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one.